obviously Bitcoin as an asset, you always want to hold your own Bitcoin and use it as an asset as it was intended, right? If, if they're not your keys, they're not your Bitcoin. You you yeah. want to hold your own keys. But there's a huge cohort who doesn't care about that at all. They just see that, oh my goodness, Bitcoin year to date, it brings my sharp portfolio sharp ratio up above two and a half. It brings my year to date returns more than double the highest performing stock market sector in the United States. I want to buy some of that. And my money is locked up in my brokerage account or my tax deferred savings account or my retirement account. I want to allocate to that. And so Huge demand for people who are just looking to get in from a price appreciation standpoint. And from that perspective, looking at lining up these two dates, lining up these two assets, gold's ETFs launch, Bitcoin's ETF launch, looking at gold's price appreciation since its ETF launch, it was a huge boon for gold's price. If you just line the two up, line, line the days up that both assets, respective ETF suites launched, uh, Bitcoin clears $350,000 very easily. And of course, that's in a much shorter time frame in my purview than it took gold to uh, reach its prices following its ETF launch purely because you don't have the paper gold problem that you do with Bitcoin. And also I, I mentioned inelasticity. Um, Bitcoin is perfectly priced inelastic. When we talk about economics, mm. you know, as the demand for gold goes up massively, people buy gold, price of gold goes up and the supply schedule of gold rises too, to meet that new demand. And then all of a sudden that acts as a headwind for the price. Whereas with Bitcoin, you can't change the supply schedule. It's completely in elastic, it's price completely price inelastic to any changes in demand. And so with that in mind, it's an entirely new ballgame.